good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm Adam Medeiros. This is my lovely wife, Amy. And we're teaching the um, Romance and Sexuality course of the marriage class here at Quinonia. Uh, let's just pause for a moment. I'm going to open up in prayer. Father, I do thank you for who you are. I thank you that uh, whoever's watching this right now, whoever's studying it, Father, you truly touch their hearts and their minds, that they truly be focused on, on the commitments that they're about to make, that truly, Father, they're led by you, that, that their spouses, their, their, their boyfriend, girlfriends, fiancés, whatever they are right now, Lord, that they have truly been directed to their path by you, Lord. Bless them, encourage them, and help them truly to, to be un united together in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're teaching a course that um, is the most popular one, in case you haven't noticed, <laughs> but uh, Romance and Sexuality. Uh, by now, you guys have uh, gone through a, a lot of classes already. Uh, you've already gone through your finance class. You've already gone through um, getting to know who, who God is in your marriage, all that good stuff. And, and we teach one that is one of the main reasons that people have conflicts in their marriage. And so my wife and I enjoy doing this. We've done this for many years. And we hope that you guys will get just a little hint of, of the, the good stuff that you have, that your spouse has for you and you have for them. Starting out on, uh, from the Song of Solomon, um, there's, there's some great um, teaching, great wisdom from that book on, on marriage, on relationship, on physical affection, even sexual um, relationships. Um, we're not going to go over it, but there's uh, scriptures in uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Um, and that's the, the groom speaking of the beauty of, of, his, of his, um, his lover. And then chapter 5, verses 10 through 16 is when she's speaking to him on, on the things that she loves about him. It's a great book to read. We would encourage it. We're not going to touch on it, it um, in depth other than... Um, know that it's there and and it's a good thing to remind one another of how much you love them how how beautiful you find them um, that that constant verbal affirmation is so important um, uh, you need to verbalize it often um, what you love about the person what you find attractive uh, we always re recommend that that you find um, at least five things five physical um, attributes that you find attractive in your mate and um, and what they are, and, um, and it's nice to, to hear it. It never gets old. Adam, still, we've been married um, 26 years. <laughs> 25 um, great years. We've actually been married 27. Oh. <laughs> only the first 25 were enough. great. The first, the first two were a little Not shaky. Not that great. They and, weren't that great. And I had no, cu no cu uh, a clue. Amy told me years later that, no, we've only been married so many good years. The first two were kind of shaky. That's why they weren't that good, is he had no clue. Men I had take no note. Clue. He had no clue. Yeah. He's clued in now, and he's really, really a wonderful husband. And one thing he does almost on a daily basis is he tells me how, how pretty I am, that he, he thinks I'm beautiful, he thinks I'm lovely. And there's times when I know it's not true. I just know it's not true. There are ugly days. There are just days where you just don't feel good, and you've got a bad case of the uglies. And um, Adam just never hesitates to tell me how pretty I am, and that just affirms how much he loves me, it affirms to me um, that, that he is still attractive by me, and um, that does a great thing. And it's not just physical, you know, when you're talking about, you know, verbal attraction, um, I'm sorry, verbal affirmation, affirmation. It, it's not just the physical attraction, you know, that's there, but it's, it's who that person is, and you need to let them know just just how much you love them, even if it's, you know what, I, you know, I love the way you you think about me. I love the way that, you know, you may not be saying anything, but but I know you know you have not, you have thoughts toward me. I I love that, and and that kind of affirmation is just invaluable. But in those scriptures, the verbal things that you say last a long time. If they're negative, they're going to last a long time. Probably longer than the positive, yeah. unfortunately. So. And if they're positive, they're going to last a long time. Um, I'm not taking any chances on it. I'm going to do it daily because I want my spouse to know that she is beautiful to me. And God has given her to me, and I take that as a gift from God. And, and I treasure what God has given me. God has given me many things. Salvation was number one. Uh, the Holy Spirit, I don't take any of those lightly. 
And I don't take my spouse any lighter than those. A gift from God is what you're getting. So men, um, buckle those shoes down and tie the hatches down and say, hey, I'm making a commitment to know that let my spouse know how much I love her and how much I'm gonna verbally affirm that love for her on a daily basis. And, and your lives will be different for doing it. Showing physical affection, um, there's, there's, it's not just what we would automatically think of as the obvious, but there's, there's a lot of affection you can show one another. One is just visual attention, um, really looking at, at one another. And um, you, can make, you can make eyes wherever you are. You could be at work. We work together. And so there's a lot of times where through the hustle and bustle, we can make eye contact and we know what we're saying to one another. And, and you probably know what I'm talking about when you can give them the eye, the look. And it's a good look, not the look, the bad look, the good look. It's not a good look, but that one's a good look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you understand, don't you? But, but make, make eye contact. When you're talking, um, it's so easy to just take each other for granted and let their presence be just taken for granted. And, and it's a gift. Every day with your spouse is, is a gift. And um, make eye contact. Make, make personal, intimate eye contact um, on a regular basis. Um, and, and on that, and, and, and let her know that you are attentive. You should be attentive to what she is wearing. You, you, that visual attention is something that lets her know that you're looking at her. Like when she's wearing different earrings that you've never seen before, or she changes her hair, or she's wearing something that you really like. You know, if you like that dress short and she's wearing a short dress, and you better say, wow, I really like that dress, you know? Notice what she's doing, and that is the, the, the visual attention that she will always remember that, wow, you know what? My husband notices me. He, is, he makes note of what I'm wearing. And when she doesn't wear something, that you, like, you may even want to tell her, you know what, man, I really like the way that, that those pants looked on you the other day. They were great. You know, that kind of thing. Let her know that you're noticing what she does. Um, another way is through kisses. Um, you can have the most passionate kisses and um, in the most random places, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, I, I want to emphasize the fact that, and we'll get into to sex a little bit more later on, but God created it. It's a good thing. And, and many of us who've grown up in Christian homes um, never heard about it, never really didn't get talked about. It was always kind of a a, a dirty word or something that was inappropriate and um, and it's not it's there's a, a, a time and a place for everything and I've always likened it to, to dirt um, I have a garden and, and the dirt in my garden is good dirt it's good soil and it's rich and it's new, got lots of nutrients in it and and it's perfect where it is but if I was to take a handful of that and throw it in my living room rug it's inappropriate it's out of line it doesn't belong there and that's when it becomes dirty is when it's outside of God's um, boundaries and sex within the marriage relationship is a wonderful thing and and never ever forget that it's a it's a wonderful gift um, it's a beautiful thing um, as as a married couple you need to be talking about it you need to be having it on a regular basis a very frequent basis um, but but don't get in a rut it doesn't always have to be the same position in the same bed for the rest of your marriage you can get creative and that's still okay you can have fun in your sex life, and it's okay. It's not wrong. It's not dirty. Um, as long as it's within the parameters of, of God's Word, um, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing. But, but be creative. It, can, it needs to be out. Your romance needs to be outside your bedroom. It needs to be um, in the car, um, in the grocery store, making dinner, cleaning up the kitchen, doing chores together, taking care of kids together. There's lots of opportunities to be romantic with one another, and um, and, and Adam's always been very affectionate. That was always uncomfortable for me. Like, not a friend of the kids. Oh, you know, no, like, not the kids. And, um, and it's good. It's good for them to see their, their father love on their mother. It's, it's a healthy thing to see that physical affection. So um, be generous with it. Yeah, and there is a lot. I know Amy really jumped ahead quickly here and got into. I mean, we've gone through half through the the, you know, the sexual relation thing already. Down to number ten, and, I don't know. and I was still up here somewhere. So just give me a second. I'll be good. Sorry. No. But uh, there are a lot of a, a lot of different types of uh, of affection, and you need to work them all. And one thing I always like to say is again, uh, through time together, uh, you can't 
expect your wife to be stimulated towards you in in a sexual way if she hasn't spent time with you. Men are the they're ready. We're ready right now. I mean, we 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 we're ready for sex. Women are the crockpot where they takes a little bit of time. They need to be they men need the to be ro yeah, men of the microwave. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, <laughs> microwave crockpot, you know. Mm -hmm. Food. <laughs> but spend time together. Um, before men, before you think of the sexual relationship, think about the time that you're spending with your spouse. Think about spending quality time. If you have children, make make a time where those children have gone to bed or you've you've gotten a sitter to where you can have quality time with your spouse. So she can begin to know what you're thinking and, and get on the same page with you. And and it makes a world of difference. But quality time is one of those things that you cannot you can't put it out and expect to have a great relationship. Spend time together. Uh, God created you, and when you get married, he said that he joins the two together, and that together they become one. And to become one flesh is you need to know who she is, where she is, how she is, that kind of thing. I, I always like to say this, but, you know, anything that you want to be successful in, you study it and you learn it as best you can. Well, you need to know your wife. I can tell you right now when my wife's going to have her next period. I can tell you because sex is important to us. And you know what? There's going to be that time right before that period where she's not going to be as friendly. There's going to be a time after that period that, you know, emotions are going to change. But I'm telling you, men, know your spouse. That way you are prepared. You shouldn't be constant. Oh, wow, you're on your period? Well, why didn't you know that? It happens every month. It's going to come around again. So men... Brace yourself. <laughs> yeah. Know your spouse. Know your spouse intimately. She is not a roommate. She is who God has given you to be your helpmate, to be with you. You guys are one. So you should know her as well as she knows herself. And that way you become more prepared for what the curves in the marriage, when those curves come up. For instance, if she... Women are all different, believe me. They all, I can't give you one cookie cutter to say they're all going to be this way. But when she's getting ready to start her period, she will be more moody majority of the time. Most women are. And you need to be ready to, to flow with those moods, knowing they're temporary and, and things are changing. So men, know your spouse intimately. And that's what that means. Know everything about her. You, of course, the casual things are you should know what she loves. You should know what, what her favorite color is. You should know what her favorite flower is. You should know those kinds of things also. But it goes way beyond that to have a successful marriage that it has a healthy sexual relationship with it. So it's all tied in. How can you show your love through your, through your actions? And there is a wonderful book out there, and I would recommend it highly. It's called The Five Love Languages, and I'm drawing a blank on who wrote it, but it's a wonderful book. Um, and it talks about how each person, we have different ways we express and receive love. It's not all the same. And that was a just a light came on when I read that because um, I'm, I'm a server, and I, I, I like to, to serve, and um, I like to bake. And times we'd be having a squabble. Um, and, and most of the time, I have to admit, was, was sex related. Most of our battles and most of our arguments that we've had um, in our marriage have been generally the lack of my aggression, lack of me pursuing Adam, and, and, and that's getting off the track. But women, you need to do that. Um, it's, it's men are typically the pursuers. They're typically the aggressors. It's kind of in their nature. Um, but, but once in a while, they want to be pursued. Once in a while, your, your husband's going to want you to, to make the move and to, to plan it and romance him and seduce him. I mean, there's, it, you, can, you can make it fun. But, um, but those love languages, physical affection is Adam's love language. And um, one time we had been fighting. I think it's because it was a, a lack of sex, but probably. I, ma I made times. him a pie. Yeah. I just thought, oh, he's going to come home from work and I'll have this great pie and he's going to be so happy. He just came home and totally rejected it. He didn't want any part of it. Because that wasn't how he received love. That was, wasn't what he needed right then. Um, his, his confidence and my love for him, I don't know what it was. But anyway, 
I needed to have spoken that language. And, and now I know certain things when he's not happy, when he's struggling or having a, 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 a bad day. Um, I know the things that I can do um, that'll, that'll make it better. And it's an ongoing process of learning. Again, we've been married now 27 years, and, uh, and it's ongoing. And I'd like to tell you that I've mastered it, and I have not. It's still an ongoing participation of two people focused on the calling that they have that God has given them. The being married together is you have to know that God has called you together or, or you're making a huge mistake. And so if God hasn't called you together, then seriously think about what you're doing because if you know it's God's calling, then you're going to do everything within your power to make it work, to know your spouse, to be an effective tool in God's hand. And all of these things are great. And, and you definitely, you need to know what her language is. You need to know it. You, it's not an option. You, you're going to have to know it. Uh, there, are, there are hundreds of books that we can resource to you that um, have just been wonderful. Um, his, his love, her love. Come on, help me, work with me. Well, there's His Needs, Her Needs. Yes, His Needs, Her Needs. I don't think that's the one. And think. that was the one. Okay. And so, <laughs> you know, there are great books that you guys can, can get to read that come from people who have gone through these things already, and that's all they are. Most of the time you read those books, it's just people writing about what they've gone through, and you get to glean from that and learn from it so you can avoid it. So there's tons of books out there on marriage, and I always do throw this bit in, it's make sure it is Christian based. Yeah. There's also a ton of books out there that leave God out of the picture. And in anything in your life, if you're pursuing to be a couple that claims that God is their God, Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, then get Christian based counseling. It's the only way that it will keep you really on track and intimate with not only your spouse, but with who Jesus Christ is also. Um, how often should you have getaways when married? You know, that is a question that... Uh, we are you know, not the ones to answer We well, are not the ones to ask, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that is a personal thing that every couple will be completely different. But you need to know what you can afford and how much time you have and then make do with what you have. Amy and I have gotten away to the next room, and that's been our getaway. We've been tied down so much where we've gotten away to, you know, at the shop and had a little, a little picnic out there. But whatever it is, you guys need to come up to what is good for the both of you that you can, that is financially good, that's physically sound, and that both of you can enjoy. And that comes through communication, finding out what the needs are, what the resources are, know all that, and then make time to get away. I know we talked, touched a little bit about it, you know, having time together. This is, this is the same thing, is sometimes you need to just get out of the element of where you're at, just to go away, be in a different element with your spouse alone, and begin to relearn each other again, because it will be ongoing. And once you think you've mastered it or you've learned that woman, I guarantee you there's going to be a whole new curve coming in, and it's going to be a whole new ball game. So make time for those getaways. They are important, not just because I want you guys to go on vacation. I don't take vacations. I'll just be honest with you. And it bugs my wife to death. But I, I want to go on vacation. It's another story. <laughs> but uh, but I, I wanted to, to um, elaborate on that because we do have a business and we are tied to it. We don't get opportunities to, to go away. Um, we have learned to, to have our date nights without ever leaving home. And, but it's, it's setting aside a specific time for that one-on-one -on -one um, and, and we'll, we'll say, oh, well, you know, it's Monday morning, we're going to set the clock at six o'clock. We're going to get up and have coffee together. And that's, that's our date. And we can't wait. We talk about it and talk about it and build it up. And that time comes and we have it one-on-one, -on -one, Adam and I, um, no interruptions. We've got a great little spot on our porch. And, um, sometimes we'll set up a Saturday night dinner out there and I'll, we'll have candle lights and music playing. And it's, it's as good as going out. We don't have to spend any money. Um, there's things you can do in the car in your garage if you've got a sitter in the house. I mean, there's, you, get, you get creative when you don't have a whole lot of money or a whole lot of time. Um, we would have date times getting the oil changed, just sitting in the waiting room, um, spending time holding hands and 
um, just telling each other how much we love each other and kissing and looking at each other and um, she's a little easier to look at than me but hey mm -mm. Oh. <laughs> but no I you I think you get my point that you can you can have those getaways a lot I know a lot of people that will do a once a month date night and they set aside the specific time or a couple of times a, a year they'll have a little weekend getaway an overnight or um, we have to get a little bit more creative than that and and but but you could you know candles and soft music does a is a wonderful mood enhancer and you can do that anywhere neither one costs very much money so um, but but the point is you need to have it especially if you have small children those years are difficult they're crazy and um, and it's hard to have energy and both be awake at the same time and have the kids be asleep at the same time those kinds of things take some some real creativity and some real planning and organization but it means a lot when you get it done when you can put the kids to bed early if you can keep them up at night sometimes you can certainly put them to bed early sometimes so tweak your schedule a little bit make it happen but it's important that that you you uh, value that marriage and and that romance time you need to be uh, you need to romance one another on a regular basis and I want to just put that in there too that you know men you know we sometimes try to make it hard on ourselves that like we really don't know how to do that and and it's really quite easy I mean you guys if you're honest with each other as I'm gonna be honest with you right now it's just lend a hand if you have children and it doesn't matter if you both work or just you work it doesn't matter who works but lend a hand everybody has chores to do and if your wife has been chasing a couple of kids all day long Tell you what, you come home and you relieve her of that. You take care of those kids. You clean up the kitchen. I guarantee you that that woman will be more than willing to go the whatever you want that night because she saw you sacrifice part of your time, your relaxing time, to help her. And once you do that, I mean, make a habit of it because you know what? It's worth it. It develops not only your relationship, not only would you, will your kids enjoy it, but it shows your children that, wow, you know, mom and dad are in this together. And it's just not mom takes care of the kids and dad does this. It's, no, we're in this marriage together uh -huh. for everything that we're in. To know that we're a team makes all the difference in the world. That it's not him and I against each other, opposing each other, competing against each other. We're the team. And, and it's the rest of the world that, that's against us. And, and we have to protect one another. Um, and Adam, being the wise man that he is, figured that out. Because there was a time when he'd go to bed, and I'm still trying to get the kids bathing in bed and clean up the kitchen and tidy up the house, and I'm dragging myself to bed, and I'm half dead. And he's there, had a little nap, and now he's ready to go. And I'm like, don't, don't even touch me. Don't even think about it. Because um, I'm exhausted. There's nothing left to give. I've given and given and given, and I'm spent. There's nothing left. And um, Adam realized that. and. Um, would say, go get the kids ready for bed. I'll clean up the kitchen and, and let's get to bed quicker. And so he could help me and together now we're a partnership, we're a team and the goal is to get to bed. And, um, and it makes it a whole lot more fun getting there. There's some anticipation. Um, but, but there's been many times where he just said, go on, go on up and get ready for bed. I'll clean everything else up. And, and it's, it's a treasure, it's a priceless gift. But when, he, when I know he's, he's supporting me, he's, he's for my own good and my own benefit. And it's something I don't take advantage of and it's not something that happens every night. But, but there are those times where he knows I'm tired. Um, there was one particular time where I was just, had a lot going on and people coming in the house and I was just a basket case and I was just ready to lose it. And I'm spasming really bad. And he's, he just said, Amy, how can I help you? What can I do for you? And, and I tell you that blessed me more than, than I can say that he had things that he needed to do but he was willing to put it aside to help me. He saw that I had a need and he was just going to do whatever I needed and I said, please just do this and this and this and he's like, done. And he did it and he did it better than I could have ever done it too. But that that partnership, that team, and I know he's he's for me. He's He's got my best interest. It's a whole lot easier for me to give of myself and, and want to serve him back. Right. It's good to be a team. A very good team. And it all depends on how good you want that team to be is going to be how much work you put into it. Know your teammates. Yeah. You know, there are so many, uh, I'm not even going to get into it, but any, any professional sport that you <laughs> see, those people have learned each other. Mm -hmm. 
they know each other. They know what they're going to do. When that quarterback throws that ball, he knows that receiver is going to be there because he has spent so much time with them. They know it. And that's what you have to be with your spouse. You need to know them so you know what they're going to do before they do it. it. It's an art, and you guys can master it. Now, let's get down to the nitty-gritty because <laughs> let me tell you this. That sex is good, and it's not something that Satan came up with. It was God's intent for mankind. And so he has perverted it, there's no doubt. But it's not what it was originally intended for. And so God's version of sex is good, and it's how he wants a couple to reproduce, to have in pleasure, and have enjoyment in their relationship. So it is good. There are a, a lot of aspects, and everybody is different, but every part of a woman's body is for your enjoyment, her husband. And there is no one else that can meet those needs that she can meet. It, it's not possible. Uh, for one, I mean, if you're having a, a premarital affair, then of course you're out of God's will and, and there will be consequences to that. But your wife can meet all those same needs. There, you know, I, I, and I, I'm, I'm just gonna jump around a little quick, sorry, but you know, I, I've told yeah. people, I said, you know, and a friend of mine, and he, he, he liked to, when he was out of town, he would ha have a prostitute. And I told him, I said, what can she do that your wife can't do? And you know what? He couldn't answer that because there was nothing. But it was the, the fascination of, of it's something else. It's, it's cheating. It's wrong. And, and some people like to do that. And, and it is, it's wrong. It, it's just led Satan leading you astray. But your wife has everything you need, and if you've managed your life well, if you've studied her, if you've done all these other things that we've just talked about, then your sexual relationship with your wife, who is the only person that can meet those, will be wonderful. And she will have as much enjoyment as you. Now, I want to just say that was... Um one of the, the wisest things I've ever I've ever heard, I've ever been taught, but that was years ago somebody had said that, I was at a, actually at a Bible study, um, that, that a wife is the only one that can do that. And that really makes me feel real special when I realize I am the only one in this world. I am the only one here that can, can be the blessing to Adam, that can meet those sexual needs, that are guilt-free, no consequences, um, blessed by God, and um, it, it's a sense of destiny, it's a sense of purpose. Um, it, it makes me feel very special to him to know that I'm the only one that can do that, but with that comes a responsibility. Um, he can't have it anywhere else, so if I'm not willing to give it or willing to, to serve him that way or, or bless him that way, um, he's, he's missing out, and, and, and that leaves him frustrated and, and angry and irritated and open to s s temptations. Um, women, it's, it's a wise thing. Keep, keep your husband sexually satisfied. Um, I, I get his eye. I get that um, special place in his heart because I'm the one that meets that need. I get the reward of that, and, and I'm blessed in return. In, in many ways, I'm blessed in return, but um, Adam used to joke about... Um, <laughs> These headaches that he would get. He'd call them sperm retention headaches. SRH. SRH. And if it had been a few days and he's getting the, the backup and it's backing up and giving him a headache, and he could just say, getting an SRH, Amy, and then I, I, I know he needs this release. And um, you can make life fun. I mean, it can doesn't have to be too rigid, but I got lost my train of thought. Sorry. Yeah, but no, there's, there's just a lot of wonderful things that, as you know your spouse, uh, I'd like to tell you that, you know, having sex every day is is the best thing. And I would tell you that, but then Amy would probably hit me or something. But every person is an individual and different. Some, some men are completely satisfied with sex once a week, once a month. That's not wrong. What, what's wrong is you not knowing it. Find out where their sexual level is. And then once you know that, then it's just as much your responsibility as it is his then to make sure that's met. If you guys come to a conclusion and say, you know what, you know, I think I'm sexually satisfied at twice a week, then when it's two weeks have gone by and you haven't had sex, I can guarantee you there's something wrong. So 
you two need to have good communication about sex to understand where the needs are. And then once you know those needs, both of you should know them. Both of you should come to a conclusion of saying, yeah, you're right. This is going to be an adequate amount of sex for us, you know, uh, once a week, three times a week, five times a week, whatever it is, it'll be up to the individual. But it should be something that is, a, it comes from the two of you communicating and, and figuring it out, what is it that's good for us? Because what's good for us may not be what's good for you. So always keep that. Every, you are an individual and, and you as a couple would be an individual couple. There is no other organism like you two together. So learn that and, and then things will go well. Now, a, a woman's body, men, uh, I know I've, I've, I'm going to beat this to the ground, but you need to know what she likes and does not like. You need to know how she likes to be kissed. You need to know how she likes to be touched. God has put in, in on her body, there are areas of her, her breasts and different areas in her body that if you rub them, kiss them, stimulate them, that it stimulates her. And you need to know what that is because again, every woman is different. And so, and I always tell this to the guys, guys, don't think just because so-and-so says this is what his wife likes, that it means that your wife's gonna like it. She may not like it, okay? Find out from your wife. Let me, and just let me add real quick. You shouldn't be talking to so-and-so about that anyway, okay? There are certain things that, uh, that oh, it does come up? Okay, yes. Confidence is, is one of those things that I don't that care how good a friend he is. You don't discuss your sexual relationship with your wife to, with anybody. That's bottom line. But there are parts of her body that you need to learn, like a craftsman learns to work with a tool that, that makes her feel good. And the same thing on, on her side. Both of you should be having orgasms. Um, it's typically you, 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 the stereotype you hear of, you know, just the man. Um, I don't want to say getting off, but that's the only word that's coming to my mind. Sorry. Yeah, um, having an orgasm. But it needs to be both of you. And um, sometimes that's a problem with a relationship. Sometimes women have a hard time with that. Um, pers pursue that. Find out why. There's great books on that as well. You can get... Um, and again, I have to emphasize um, Christian Christian based books because um, there's so many worldly books that just they, they, they get get a little twisted but but there's some good Christian based books that you can find out about and but research it there's lots of information out there. Um, if you are having a hard time at orgasm with females um, find out why work work it out because it's it needs to be something you both enjoy. Um, otherwise, it's going to be hard to have it all the time if it's not any fun. Um, and I want to say, too, that, you know, and there were things that Amy had to tell me that she didn't like I, that I was doing. And men, don't get your feelings hurt. She is helping you fine-tune you to be the machine that you should be, okay? So I have to be able to take criticism. I have to be able to let her, allow her to say, you know, no, I don't like when you do that. That doesn't make me feel good. And then my response isn't, oh, come on. Well, then it's, forget it. Yeah. No, my response is, you know what? I'll never do that again. And mm -hmm. I'm going to find out. And that's for both. For both. both. both and then I'm going to find out pursue that. what is it that you like. It all comes down to that communication of knowing each other, men. Learn your spouse. I can't say it enough times. And Adam touched on it before about, uh, you know, the, just the perversion. But... Um, I have to emphasize there cannot be any place for pornography. It cannot belong in a, in a Christian marriage. It is a snare from the enemy. It's, it's addictive. It's perverted. It's twisted. And it, it, it can destroy a marriage. And, and it, it frequently and it will. destroys marriages. And it will. So just don't even go there. Don't even open the door for it. There's no need for it. Um, if you're not having stimulation, you pray. God, like again, going back to what we said earlier, yeah. God created this. He is the creator of it. Um, if you're having problems with your finances, you, you, you seek out God's will and find out how, what, how to turn that around and what's the right way to deal with your finances. If you're having problems in your sex life, you pray about it. God will, God will reveal it, um, and he will, he will give you insight and, and open doors, and, um, but, but you cannot open that door to, to pornography, so I can't stress that enough. Um, and, and you need to know that, men, if, if your spouse is not stimulating you, okay, and you have to look, to somebody else for stimulation, you have a problem, okay? It's not your wife's problem. It's not that other person's problem. It is your problem, and you need to deal with that. 
and if whether it'll take fasting and prayer or or seeking out your pastor and and having a little one-on-one -on -one confession time whatever it's going to take you need to pursue that because that problem will kill your marriage okay it will destroy your marriage and your relationship with the gift God gave you so your wife needs to be the one to stimulate you and there has to be that relationship between the two and that enough confidence in each other that you're not going to look. You don't need to be stimulated by outside sources, okay? And she has to be the one to stimulate you. And, um, and men are stimulated uh, uh, visually, I'm sorry. Um, with women, we're like Adam said before, we're, we're the slow cookers. And, and the romance can start in the morning, sipping coffee, heading off to work, through dinner, through, through cleaning up the kitchen, whatever. Um, there's been times where we're like, tonight's the night, we're going to, yeah, tonight's the night, and then we're heading up to bed, and there's just something wrong in his tone. His tone's been just a little off. I can't even remember what I said. But, but it's it how was it was said. <laughs> the tone, just boom, it's, it was, the mood was gone, and I was pissed, and it was just, forget it. I'm just not in the mood anymore, um, which wasn't fair to him, because we built him up all day, and, um, but, but we're this way we're as fickle as they come and um men you need to just figure out how to understand your wife in that but but um but men like adam had said before can turn it on in an instant just visually and 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 women you be wise to to make sure um you're looking as good as you can look and i guarantee you i've had three kids and i've been married a long time and i'm a lot older than i was when he fell in love with me and um I'm, my body's not what it used to be, but Adam, will, would, you wouldn't know it to, to hear him the way he compliments me. He still finds me attractive, but there's things that I do to make sure I'm, I'm as healthy as I can be, that I look as good as I can. Um, and, and I think there'll be a handout on um, what men and women want, wish, this, wish their spouses knew, something, I can't, I can't remember, sorry. But there will be. There but, um, women don't go to bed in granny panties and flannel nightgowns. Um, if you if you have to buy a down comforter or turn up the heat or buy some firewood, do what you got to do to make the house a little warmer. Um, that was a thing with Adam and I. He hated when I was wearing pajamas, you know, the, the pants, and because he's a physical person, he wanted to touch me and rub me at, at night when we're sleeping. Um, but but again, you, if you if your husband is is specifying that something um, is attractive to him, that he likes something, then Go out of your way you, to, to, to wear the right kind of underclothing and um, be, be physically attractive. F find out what he, what he likes and, and, and do that. That takes effort on both ends. Uh, I know we've spoken to men, we've spoken to, you know, to women. Um, there's just, it, it's an ongoing communication. And, and I want to emphasize just a little bit more. The, the, the better you are at communicating with your spouse, the better your, your finances will be, the better your relationship will be, the better relationship you'll have with God, and the better your sex life will be. It's about communication. And I want you couples to, to truly think about it and say, you know, there's not going to be anything that I can't discuss with my spouse. Uh, th there shouldn't be anything. If you can't discuss it with your, with your wife, then you sure can't discuss it with your buddy Bill at work. Okay, you can't discuss it with with anybody. You need to discuss your sexual desires and sexual needs with her, and she needs to discuss those with you, and together come to a, a resolve on what is this, how are we going to deal with this, how are we going to handle this, and how are we going to do it, kind of thing. Um, one thing that that has meant so much to me is I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, Adam is committed to me. Um, we've we made a point years ago to just never let divorce, that word divorce, enter our vocabulary. It's not an option. It's never been an option. And, and I know that he's so committed to me. Um, if, if, if he was constantly threatened to walk out the door, if I don't get this right, he's walking. I could never fully give myself to him because there's, there's a lack of that trust and a lack of that devotion. But because I know that he is completely devoted to me, he's completely committed to me, I can be completely devoted and committed back to him. I can be totally free to, to love him completely without holding anything back. And I think um, women, um, many times if, if we've been hurt, we've been betrayed, we've been violated, we're holding a part of us back, trying to protect ourselves, um, 
just know God, God wants you healed of that. He wants you healed and restored, and, and, and men don't do anything that's going to hurt that, that place in your wife's heart. You, you've you've got to be the one to, to bring her to a place of, of wholeness, of, um, of, of security. Um, and, and because I'm secure in our relationship, I'm secure in our marriage, I can be um, a little bit more daring without fear of rejection, a fear that he's going to reject that, that move or that idea and, 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 and laugh at me. Um, because I know that he is for me. He, he wants my best interest, that I can be um, freer and more confident in, in, our, in our relationship, especially our sexual relationship. Um, there's a question here, should we discuss, discuss past sexual experience we have engaged in with people other than our partner, our fiance, why or why not? And, and I think that answer will vary according to where your relationship is. Um, many marriages just starting out, there's not that confidence, there's not that trust, there's not that um, opportunity to, to be real, um, don't lie, never lie, but if you're not comfortable discussing something, you can say, I'm just not comfortable discussing it, and that should be okay. Um, when we first got married, we didn't, we weren't at that place. We weren't at that place where I could tell him everything, and he could tell me everything, but we, that's the beauty of a marriage, is we, we develop into that, and we mature into that, and, and... I didn't want to tell her, I thought she wouldn't marry me. Anyway, oh, <laughs> no. no, nothing. But... But I've known, of, you know, certain people that are so insecure if, if there's been sex before your relationship with one another, if you've had sex with somebody else, that there's a lot of insecurities and jealousy. And, but but um, if there has been prior relationships, um, don't, don't compare your spouse with all the other ones of, you know, well, you weren't as good as this one, and yeah, I had this one way back, and they were way better. Don't, don't ever, ever do that. Um, but, but as time goes on, you're able to, to expose a little bit more of yourself. Adam and I have secrets that we've never told another soul that, that, that are safe and secure with us. And again, it goes back to that partnership, that team. We're, we're in this together. And I know I don't have to worry about him telling anybody anything about me. And he doesn't have to worry about me um, sharing confidences with other people. And um, I know men and women both are guilty of that. They confide in their friends of problems they're having in the bedroom, and that's not a good thing to do. I don't recommend it. Um, I think if you're having problems in your sexual relationship, you go to a pastor, you get counseling, you seek prayer, you seek resources, but, but don't ever share confidences of your sexual relationship with, with your friends because it's just not... It's just not wise. It's not a good idea. No, and I want to touch on that too. Again, we're in a society today that many of you will have already been divorced, um, second marriage, third, whatever it is. Um, re sexual relationships are happening, happening, uh, very affluent. I mean, it doesn't. You just got to watch TV for a minute, and you know. So, a lot of you are going to come into the into a marriage having previous sexual relations, and. And Satan's going to use that against you, but I want to tell you now that you know the two of you can can sit down and 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 pray and pray this prayer. Say, God, make me clean. Just make me like like a virgin, and and start over. I know whenever you set your date, and even some of you that are in, are taking are going to hear this tape, you're having sexual relations right now, and you're not married yet. And I'm going to tell you, it, it's not right. So why don't we start by saying, you know what? No, we're going to pray, and, and God is going to make you, to me, like you're going to be a virgin, and we're going to have sex for the first time on our wedding night. Just stop doing it. If it's three months, if it's six months, if it's a year, whatever you can do. But, but take that step, because it will mean something on that marriage night that you are giving yourself to this man for the rest of your life. So don't let Satan use that against you. If you bring it out now, both of you know there have been previous sexual relations. Either we're doing it ourselves or we've had others. And just say, you know what, it's done. We're gonna pray God is gonna take that away. In the name of Jesus Christ, he is gonna touch both of you to be as virgins. And you guys can have an awesome relationship from that point on, Amen. it will be just the two of you. And, and pray that prayer and let God touch your life to direct you to be holy before him. And your sex will be so much better. Your lives together will be so much better. And, and God's going to bless that union. 
Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, keeping a confidence. I know Amy has talked about it, and um, I want to stress mainly to men. I think men have a bigger problem just because I'm, I'm in that area. But I think women too. Um, I don't know. <laughs> again, don't don't discuss your intimate relationship with your wife with anybody. Mm -hmm. Not your dad. Not not your brother. With anybody. It doesn't matter who they are. That is an area that is for your eyes only, for your mind only, and for your thoughts only. And uh, do not discuss it. It's just not, it's not right. Um, I want to close in prayer. And I hope that each one of you can glean a little bit off of this and, and use it in your marriage to have a wonderful sexual relationship throughout the many years that you are married. To constantly find the love and the joy in your spouse that, that God sees in you and, uh, and just pursue her constantly uh, and that you, her, may pursue him constantly. Yeah. She. She, yes. Um, but let's pray. Go ahead. Father, I do lift up every, every individual, every couple that's, that's watching this video. And Father, I pray a blessing over their marriage in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that you were the creator of marriage, that you have designed mm -hmm. it, that you um, saw it in your perfect plan. That You said it was good. You brought a man and woman together and said it was good. And Father, I pray that the, the, the sexual and, and romantic relationships between these couples will be good, that they'll be, um, they would flourish, that they would prosper, that they would um, have marriages that are safe and secure and supportive. In Jesus' name, Father, I just thank you that you, that you set free where there's bondage, where there's, where there's oppression, where there's shame, you bring forgiveness. I thank you, Lord, that, that you are able to, to make us whole, that you're the only one that can make us whole. And as we come to our spouse in marriage, a whole person, that, Father, we can, we can have a, a whole and complete marriage and a healthy marriage. And I thank you for that. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Um, next week or the next video you see will be Pastor Tim on faith in marriage. And believe me, without faith, it is impossible to please God. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you.